So now in this video, we're finally in this video series adding a transistor to the output of an op amp so that the output basically just has to tell the transistor to turn on or off. It doesn't have to power the load itself. And the reason why is because we're not using much voltage right now, but even at three volts, we can light this green LED in particular right here. It's actually being powered from the positive rail through the resistor the LED and then to the output which connects to the negative rail right now and if I turn the trim pot here because this is a comparator circuit now the output is high but unfortunately it can't get to the positive side of the power supply voltage and LEDs drop voltage and these two drop more voltage than what the output will supply right now so we added the transistor where all we have to do for the high output tell the transistor to turn on and then it will turn on the LED will light of course there's some things we have to take into account so I'll take this apart and build it step by step so that we can look at those so now first thing we're going to do is I would clear the board look at the pin layout for the LM358 so different op amps have different pin layouts this one is a dual op amp and so one op amp on the left side, one on the right side. We do have to power it, so we're using three volts right now. And you can use a split supply too. So right now, this is ground, the uh, pin four, the uh, negative rail there. But you could have ground be a halfway point from what the power supply is so that you have a more positive and a more negative voltage. This will work with either a single supply or a dual supply. But we're just using a single supply now. So. Uh, that's topics for other videos. The output here is pin 1 right there. The output, the inverting input is the pin below it, pin 2, and the non-inverting input. The next pin down, pin 3. And then there's another separate op amp over there that we're not going to use in uh, this video. So, now, we're going to do the uh, circuitry for a comparator. Pretty straightforward. Just to make things simple, we can set whatever voltage we want below the power supply voltage to the inverting input right there and so we're just gonna take two of the same value resistors they're only high value resistors because this circuit does not the inputs do not depend on current so it just looks at the voltage so you might as well use a high value resistor to uh, reduce wasted uh, current there we go so we're using a couple 100,000 ohm resistors right there just a very tiny bit of current leaks into the input but for the most part it just looks at the voltage so we have half of the power supply voltage and so it's a uh, pretty straightforward there I think you can see that wired up so now we're gonna grab the uh, trim pot for our variable voltage which we're gonna put to the non inverting input so the output voltage is gonna follow whether the invert or the non inverting input here is higher or lower than the inverting input so when the trim pot has a higher voltage than we set there at the uh, non-inverting output will be high if it's lower the output will be low pretty straightforward and right now the power supply is off for my portable power supply and I just want to quickly show something I don't show this in every video but uh, you can see the output is off so you actually have to unplug the unit to turn the unit off but uh, the output is off right now so if I measure the voltage at the rails you'll actually see a negative voltage so that's kind of a bad thing for this it's almost a diode drop uh, but uh, I haven't had a problem with any circuits yet due to that and so you know just something to be aware of if that's a problem or not otherwise I really love this portable power supply and uh, not perfect but uh, for the most part it does uh, what I need it to do so that's the power supply voltage now we're gonna look at the output voltage which is high right now and that's as much voltage as we can get from the output it's about uh, a volt and a half below the power supply voltage I've been finding that at various uh, voltages and that's without a load it just cannot output the full power supply voltage but we can turn this down to the negative we just had to go a little more than halfway negative and we'll see that the uh, output here 
does go to the negative rail. Looks like it may even be a spec below for whatever reason. But uh, in any case, there you can see three volts at the power rail. The output is to zero volts, the negative rail. It's like making a direct connection to the same spot right there. So we're limited to how much power it can output. That is why for our load, we're going to include a transistor only for when we have a high output. There you can see the low output. Uh, it should do fine just by itself. So now, let's get the first LED out of the way. It's the uh, what we've been doing in recent videos, just putting an LED directly to the output. The uh, LED though is actually, we consider this being powered from the positive side of the power supply right there. Because usually we think of current going positive to negative when we are following uh, current paths, even though electrons actually go from negative to a positive. But in any case, we're gonna take the uh, green LED and put that there. We could use a red LED, just we could assign meaning to the color if we want. And the meaning I have right now is either a green or a blue LED. You notice I usually use red for the higher voltage. And then sometimes, like when I put the negative, I use blue, you know, so that's kind of the coloring system I go by for more positive and more negative. And so there we have that. We already have that. I'll turn the power on. And if we're happy with just that, we can just stop right there. And uh, either the LED is on or off if, if we're happy with that. But if uh, at this low voltage, we want to power an LED with a high output, we have a little more to do. So we're going to grab the uh, 10 kilo ohm. I'll come to this 10 kilo ohm in a little bit. And we're going to put that one row above that jumper right there and so again we're going to a transistor which is an amplifier so it's going to take a small signal even though it's a switch a small signal it's going to control a larger signal on or off so we have that there and we will grab the uh, 2N 3906 and so the pin layout for the 2N 3906 maybe we can even see the uh, part number we're at 2N3904, sorry, uh, right there, 2N3904. The 2N3906 is the PNP version of this. This is the 2N3904. So hopefully you can see that. But uh, in any case, that's what it is. So we're gonna put the base, the middle pin, that's uh, emitter, left pin, and uh, middle pin is base, right pin's collector. If we turn it this way, the emitter is lower, base in the middle, and collector on top. So the base is going to go to the resistor and uh, the emitter is going to go to that jumper. So we got that back there, just kind of out of the way, not blocking things. And it's going to be switching on and off an LED and then we'll put a resistor to the positive rail. So there's uh, another 10 kilo ohm. Remember the line lead, the anode of LEDs have to be towards the more positive side. So there's line lead anode, short lead the cathode is to the collector because that's the more negative side and again we're going to use a 220 ohm resistor we could use lower at this lower voltage but for 5 volts you probably want about 220 or uh, or so so in any case you have to do the power calculations if you want to get more exact so here you can see a problem we have both LEDs on right now and so fortunately with the output we can we can get the output to uh where it's high enough that that goes off but still the the signal is not strong enough right now because of just things that have to do with the op amp that you get into more detail when you study them a little further so we're just going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor right there and let's go back to having the green LED on and we're just going to put this to the uh, negative rail and then to the base right there so it's a 10 kilo ohm and that helps pull down the voltage to the base when we don't have a high output at the op amp and uh, try to get that into focus again and uh, there we go so it's a pull down resistor helps hold down the voltage 
when we want it and it'll also make it I think I can still falsely okay right now I can't uh, falsely trigger it there we go I'm touching it enough you can see the red LED starting to glow a little bit my body can give it a little bit of a signal so that also helps prevent the uh, false signal but uh, really that's about it we wired it up here we'll look at uh, the schematic I wrote some notes and uh, I already covered basically everything we said there and so the uh, color coding can be based on whatever you like whether you want a different color for whether it's high or low another thing you could do is instead of a comparator a circuit uh, non-inverting you can make an inverting if you like your wiring but not uh, which one is high or low at any time you could just swap whether the signal goes to the inverting or the non-inverting and your set uh, voltage from inverting to a non-inverting that will change which LED is lit up at which time too there's a lot of variations you can make but uh, here you can see we already said we set our signal and we have a variable signal so that the output goes high or low the output goes low pretty well so that the green LED will light up uh, directly from the positive supply but it doesn't go high terribly well you know you get some uh, like interference and uh, stuff so we have a transistor to amplify the power for an LED to go low but still even when the output is high the uh, both of the LEDs were lit when the output was high so unfortunately some enough current was getting through the uh, resistor and LED when it was uh, low to get the transistor to go and so we had to pull the transistor low to make sure it's off unless the output is high and uh, so uh, we had to add that just because we noticed the LED would not go off the transistor did not turn off so if it's ever not turning off when it's supposed to you can just pull the uh, voltage down and make that adjustment so this isn't uh, a perfect circuit or anything but we worked through a lot of methods to improve what we were working with if we have particular things to work with so right now my focus is the LM358 I'm trying to get the most out of it that I can and uh, everything I'm covering though in these video series applies to op amps in general so you know learning about one op amp helps you understand other op amps more so hope that all made sense thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video